Um, but but this game I like more. Uh, Jaguars at the Bengals. This line opened up Bengals minus three, and it's still minus three across the board. So uh, who do you like in this game? Yeah, I think I like the Jaguars in this one. This is one I, I like better, but I'm not, again, I'm not super high on this one because I could see a case for the Bengals. But, I mean, the Bengals, you know, they've looked great with Joe Burrow at quarterback. Their defense is going to get healthier if they get Geno Atkins back. And they'll have a chance to pressure Gardner Minshew. But I think Minshew is going to be better off because I think Jacksonville will probably get DJ Chark back. They were missing him against the Dolphins. And that really hurt their offense because he's the best receiver on that team. He threatens defenses deep, and without him, the Dolphins and their good secondary were just able to contain the passing attack and uh, get some pressure on Minshew and make him have to settle for checkdowns. I don't think that happens against the Bengals because the Bengals' secondary has some holes in it. I think it's weaker overall than the uh, Dolphins' secondary. And then if Chark's there, it's it's a game changer for the Jaguars. So um, uh, provided that Chark has progressed from that chest injury and he's coming back, I think that that should be good. Um, the other big thing here is the Jaguars have extra rest, and normally I don't buy into that too much with the coach. Like, like Doug Marone is a solid coach. I don't think he's a great coach, but I think he's solid. Uh, but the Bengals just played an overtime game. So, you know, with that extra time to prepare and then the Bengals having played a lot more than the Jaguars recently, I think a little bit fresher legs could definitely help the Jaguars in this one. So I'm on the Jaguars probably for one or two units um, at plus three, because I think this is going to be a close game and should be settled by a field goal in either direction. Yeah, I'm, I'm right there with you. I like the Jaguars uh, quite a bit here. Um, and I, I think you're right uh, right on point with talking about uh, like how fresh these teams are um, with the Jaguars. They, it, it's it's such like a, like a huge dichotomy uh, because the Jaguars, like you said, coming off the Thursday game, they've had extra time to think about how they were embarrassed at home by the Dolphins. And then you have the Bengals coming off, not just an overtime game, but a tie. Like they went the distance the whole uh, 70 minutes. Um, teams coming off ties since 1989. That's that's the year I went back to. Uh, Nine and 17 against the spread. Um, so it kind of makes sense. You know, with the, they, they play the whole slate, the whole game. Uh, they're going to be exhausted uh, the following week. So, um, yeah, it, it makes sense for the Bengals to be tired here. Um, and – so another a great point you made is about DJ Chark. Like we've seen teams missing their number one receivers this year. Things it's been more apparent than ever how important these guys are. You have Texas missing Hopkins. You have the Vikings without Stephon Diggs. Uh, both the teams are zero three. Uh, the Saints without Michael Thomas. They lost both those games. Um, the Lions without Kenny Galladay. They lost both those games. So. You know, these number one receivers are so important to these teams and the Jaguars are missing DJ Chark. So, of course, they struggled against the Dolphins. Uh, and, you know, I, I assume Chark is going to be back. And if so, I, I'm definitely going to be on the Jaguars. Uh, and I, I'm also not sure if the Bengals deserve to be favored by three over anyone yet, except for maybe the Jets and Redskins, Giants, like, you know, the, the garbage teams. But like the Jaguars... Like I, we thought they were garbage uh, at the beginning of the year, but they they were competitive, uh, you know, against the Titans the week two, and they beat the Colts the week one. So they're better than we thought they were. Uh, so I, I think they rebound, and I, I think they went outright, and I like them for about three units. Yeah, I think for the Jaguars, we just underrated their passing weapons and the effectiveness of Gardner Minshew. I think that was our mistake. And then obviously James Robinson kind of coming out of nowhere to be a very effective running back. That's led to them having a good offense. And then they do have some talent on the defensive line, even though they've traded away a lot of good players. So I think we were definitely a little bit off there. But I uh, completely agree with you on the, uh, the the point about the Bengals not being deserving to be favored by three. Like you think about it. Because Joe Burrow's, I think, covered in every start except the first one where they pushed. Um, but the Bengals still haven't won a game yet. So why should they be favored by three points? And they couldn't even beat the Eagles last week. Like, And the Eagles were completely decimated by injuries. So I think the fresh Jaguars, uh, it just makes a, uh, a lot of sense. And evidently, my dad is eating chicken wings right now um, <laughs> and wants to let me know that they're very good. So uh, I'm looking forward to eating those later. <laughs> Very nice. Um, uh, real, real quick, uh, I, you're right about the Jaguars being better, like James Robinson and the, and the receivers, but the, I think their offensive line has been a lot better than we thought they would be, too. Um, kind of surprising. I, I thought they wouldn't be able to block at all this year, um, but they've done well. And, and so if if somehow they still end up with Trevor Lawrence, like he's going to be in a good situation with all those receivers and the blocking. And who knows, maybe James Robinson is someone they want to keep around and, and be their lead back. He's He's done a great job, so... Um, we'll see. They, they just need to work on their defense, which is just terrible. Uh